Yes. So my name is Yuri Suzuki, and uh, I'm sometimes categorized artist and a designer, sometimes musician as well. So kind of like working cross boundary between these fields. But uh, like always, I'm what I'm doing main material is always sound and music. So basically, my practice about everything about sound and music. So like just like my background, I used to work for, as an introduction, say like uh, I used to work for Japanese artists called Mewa Denki. I was in the beginning was design or a kind of production assistant, but became performer as well. So that's kind of way I developed in my practice in the beginning. So I'm just quickly show my like video there. <laughs> So after working for me, I think it was quite a great experience. Different influenced me a lot to develop in my own practice. But uh, my first kind of like my own practice became DJ and the electronic musician. That was my first career. And then uh, I moved to Berlin around, I think, 2002 or 2003, I can't remember. But at that time, I tried to establish myself as a um, like kind of DJ at that time. But unfortunately, my kind of like music is not very popular. So I like can that I'm not very really popular DJ as well. So kind of decided to move to London and study um, product design at Royal College Bath. And after graduation, I worked quite defined project. Like uh, that's why I think always difficult categorizing myself because uh, sometimes working for like making musical instrument for where I am and like sort of co-directing music video, making product, making kind of like a advertisement campaign or like art installation. That basically I have been working for like the past 10 years. Kind of big change happened like a couple of years ago. Um, I became part of the Pentagram and it's world largest kind of independent design consultancy company. It's kind of like uh, really like put into that kind of branding kind of that is product consultancy world after that. But uh, however, um, just like a really fundamentally what what i'm interested in is really purely communication that's all like pentagram considering about what communication is like that's a fundamental topic we're always thinking so i'm just like trying to show like how music um and also interaction helping to understanding things and one project is quite personal project called music for dyslexic so this really came from like my experience. So I used to be in band like uh, in Japan, like uh, the ska punk music band. I really love it at that time. But however, um, like we formed when I was a high school student or something, and uh, we kind of like enjoying the process to be like in the, being in the band. But uh, one time they decided to be professional, and I got fired because I couldn't read the musical score. So, um, so basically I used to play trombone and that's, that's really interesting instrument, everything quite physical and also your arm position representing note and uh, I really like shape of the design as well. So I, I used to learn like trombone because as I say, I can't read any musical score. So, so this is basic trombone like a musical score. But uh, I couldn't really understand it. I couldn't need any rhythm or melody or sound from this kind of visual notation. So that's why like, what I have done, I used to learn as music is actually I, I was listening and putting the number of the kind of arm position. So like almost like sort of like a physically have to learning like, you know, playing like music. Uh, but uh, it was quite sad. I got fired from the band. So I feel like, um, like when I decided to be designer, I kind of was thinking about what if we can create musical notation even dyslexic people could understand. So like my background dyslexic, so it's gonna be highly helpful to develop this project.
And uh, I came one conclusion called Color Chaser Project. So um, I, I was like looking for a lot of like visual music notation, quite a lot. And then uh, um, I just like saw beautiful visual notation designed by Toru Takemitsu, who is a Japanese um, film composer, he, quite well known and often collaborated with like a designer, so visual designer such as Bruno Minari. And, uh, and also like, of course, like uh, this, um, this like painting, like uh, uh, the, uh, downtown boogie boogie is actually Mondrian try to express music from color and the composition to express music from here. So firstly, I analyzed from how people could imagine the sound. So basically, brighter color is higher pitch sound, and the darker color is like a lower tone. So which this is sort of like logical people imagining imagining about like a sound. And the music has got sort of duration time for each note and also gap between and sound and sound. That's how I can make a component of the music. So this is one of the kind of uh, like conclusion I made that time. So basically this black crying uh, describing of the length of the songs, this white car that looks like a small robot throwing black crying. And if you interact with color, that color information translates into the sound. So, so basically, like if you're drawing it, but at the same time you're composing music. So this like method is really um, easy to understand and physically understandable, and like, immediately visual and action and sound it's connected. So it was intent to like design for more, but people doesn't have like knowledge to how to reading musical score. But then like uh, it really became quite popular content for children. And uh, I was invited for like one summer project at the Mudam in Luxembourg. It's one of the best like a museum and they're doing quite experimental project. And uh, so basically I made kind of like a large installation that time. And the purpose for this project, the people just randomly coming in and the drawing and the collaborating together to, you know, like making music through the painting or like making like, you know, drawing pictures. <laughs> So basically like this project is through the kind of experience like uh, you kind of slowly uh, like understanding music logic and then like uh, you basically like, have more fun to compare with kind of like pushing key on the keyboard like you are drawing and that's immediately you are understanding logic of how music works. And also another project is between communication project. It's actually not really sound related project but I quickly show you this project. So basically, um, I've got um, kind of like commission project from place called uh, Platform 21 in Amsterdam. And they try to do like a sort of close down event for that museum. And uh, I proposing them to like a kind of creating experience to like basically they want to have like a highly collaborative project people participating into their 10 years history of the museum and all people coming in to do something together. So I think I immediately thought this is sort of like ending of the like one museum, but they want to start a new thing. So I thought quite nice to do something sharing food in the end, but uh, I don't want to do dinner or supper because supper means kind of, you know, last supper in a way, something symbol of the end. So something I'm going to do is breakfast. And, but it's so many people coming in, like 100, 100 people coming in and they can corroborate cooking like breakfast just doesn't make sense for me. And I came up with idea, what if we creating like a primitive breakfast machine? And that's basically like my like brief. So um, if I like research that time, like there's so much like, uh, um, like sci-fi film, like uh, putting breakfast machine in the beginning of the film, because it's kind of telling about a great story coming out after. So it's always kind of great introduction as a breakfast machine. So this is from Flava, 
I'm not sure if it's allowed to play or not, but uh, I don't this is one of the most beautiful breakfast fast machine design. But I, I believe with this design by Tim Button, PV is like a great adventure. So we have a couple of references for like this kind of sci fi film and like like video scene, and uh, I can show like a couple of them. And also this Tiki Tiki Ban Ban from Disney, and also this is from, uh, I think it's from Brazil, I think. This one, and also quite famous one by Back to the Future. So when I like to the space, like basically nothing in there, like just a couple of like a podium and that kind of thing. So nothing like uh, has got at, at that time. And a little bit low budget project. So we basically went to, went to like a free market car boot sale and the correcting like a potential material could be useful for this project. And uh, this is really highly open and a bit more like a collaborative platform. So, Idea in this project is basically a really primitive machine that like you have to make. And another concept behind is actually um, you are using like kind of computer or like kind of iPhone and so on, like which is a highly black box and never understanding what's happening inside. So people to understand the basic like mechanism and how world works. So that's something I want to do from this project. So we just keep brief, like for example, can you like make like a you know, egg breaking machine, and there's sort of like a fried egg machine, and there's some people making really pretty Ready, prototypes. steady, go. Oh, Damn, no. why it work? So it's kind of growing up exhibition. There's nothing there, like people slowly building, and we conduct together at making machine. And for example, this one, the egg cooking machine, that we made it yeah. better. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then around the kind of couple of hundred people came in and they kind of helped to build the breakfast machine and in the end it looks like that. So basically kind of like 24 meter by like three meter height, like a large, large like a breakfast machine we created. Um, so like we basically offered to all people participate and the kind of all day breakfast and uh, suddenly I put in the news as well. So that was pretty popular things, but it's all about nothing about making um, like uh, um, you know, practical machine. So like I'm just a kind of a, probably a bit noisy, so. Picture spin quiz, fingers on buzzers team. <laughs> <laughs> it's Vic Mowbray. Vic Mowbray, Sugar Winston. What was the picture, by the way? Was there a story about people hanging out for it this week? Trying to attract ducks into their underpants. <laughs> You dirty washing up and get a duck into your underpants, film it for you've been framed, get 300 quid. And the bread in the washing line. Yeah. I missed that one. Can it's we see a bit more of the picture spinning? Yes. Oh, yeah, see more picture spinning. Oh. Are those very small shirts? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a man who's invented an extremely complicated way of making breakfast? Yes, a couple of Japanese designers have yeah. spent 11 days and 900 pounds to come up with a breakfast making machine. Yeah. Do you want to have a look at the machine in action? Yeah, well, yes, please. Yeah. They spent 900 quid on it. Might as well. <laughs> like Wallace and Gromit, isn't it? <laughs> I think we'll have to abandon this one. It's rubbish. <laughs> According to Mr. Suzuki, who invented it, he's the less successful of the Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> Suzuki engineers, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, he did say, yep. actually, this isn't very useful. <laughs> Things keep falling off or breaking. Before adding, you can just put an egg in a pan, fry it, and you're done. <laughs> Yeah, so like uh, this is kind of one of the projects. So like uh, as I say, like I'm really interested in like through the kind of activity and the technology to make people to understanding things. And as a side, it's more about sound. So like uh, I would like to like share like one project called Sonic Playground. So I think I have a really amazing opportunity a couple of years ago from like a place called High Museum Art. They like do kind of summer type like uh, installation program. So they asked me to develop some project at that time. And I proposed like a quite interesting community like kind of a sort of like they're based in Atlanta. And then like they are really um, like interesting things happening because um, 
like a new like kind of community coming in and especially for like a film industry um like has got like in that city has got really low tax like late so like so many films are shooting there and the really creative community kind of moving in like quite positive things happening so i just like want to make sort of place um kind of people to merge and also kind of has got place to like uh uh, communication, mobile audio communication. That's basically what I wanted to do. And this sculpture is basically looks like a like playground looking, fun looking object. And uh, if you talk into one direction, like uh, sound, it's quite interesting way to traveling and play back like a quite interesting way. So this is mean like, uh, um, just like strangers, like people doesn't know each other, but coming in and talk, suddenly communication is starting. So this kind of sonic playground is just really playground, but the place for like people to have like kind of uh, you know, communication, that's basically I do like uh, I kind of intended for this project. And also in front of the this sculpture is really, like your face is totally like uh, anonymous and you can speak uh, whatever you want to say and also people something shouting or like singing, like never be shy. So like in a way, like this project really helps to like uh, discover like uh, people's kind of, you know, voice and also like, uh, like learning what other people think. Hello. People like singing as well. So that's kind of a driving to think about the power of the sound because that audible communication is quite strong and also bonding community at the same time. And then like that actually became like, like became sort of like one of the components of my practice. And uh, one project called uh, Welcome Chorus, that's kind of a continuous like study since like high museum art piece. So Margate is really interesting city. Like I'm actually living in Margate. I moved to London like before COVID time actually. And uh, it's really interesting city because it used to be quite popular tourism destination. But after budget year introduced like kind of so many, like it's basically kind of this community is down like really poor as a city and uh, not city, basically town, seaside town. So, but like, quite interesting things happening is like many like young people, young couple from like London start moving there, like making community and making family and also like starting new business. So really new things happening in this town. And uh, I've got commission from like, last year, I think, like uh, from Tana Contemporary because like Tana Price is one of the most famous art price from the UK. I'd hold it in like this town. And they want to have sort of digital experience, sort of a kind of place to for bonding community, that kind of installation they were looking for. So basically my idea is kind of creating sort of like music piece um, like anyone can participate and kind of building songs together. That's basically I wanted to do through this project. And uh, first of all, like uh, I corrected um, like so much word from like a different town, part of the Kent, like uh, that's kind of same like uh, area of the market. And people coming in, like speaking to the microphone and quickly actually like using actual intelligence to learn and also memorize word and melody. And this like algorithm, like keep like keep feeding and learning and just making just like every like uh, 15 minutes making new songs. So this is sort of like an example I can show you. So, so like, um, so this is almost like kind of halfway year project. We left like this installation outside of Tana Contemporary, and uh, people keep feeding like a word and opinion about the kind of market or like a personal opinion and everything. So basically, algorithms keep learning what they're talking about and generating brand new songs as a kind of choir piece. So that's why I call it Welcome Chorus. So like this one was the example like coming up. So like uh, this all created by um, like a basic algorithm and the kind of thousand to like 10,000 word coming in like composing brand new music. Do to a falling out between the solidarity, the local authority started enforcing to clean up after the statue left, which was a roadblock to the recent built some kind of structures, but the statue has been moved to a more accessible. Place where it will be safe for few 
future generations. So melody and the lyrics are totally different, but this is something about celebrating market or something about kind of opinion about market. So basically, like final aim for this song, like project is try to make anthem of the local town songs. And uh, what's kind of bright side for this project in the end, we actually created one night event. Oh, sorry, like uh, just like a bit minutes over. So kind of we created with local choir group for like sort of music from like this algorithm. And then uh, we performed like actual algorithm created songs. Like uh, basically this AI and the kind of land algorithm created these like melody and the songs. So these are like, local choir groups. Like that's one of the project. Then like moving to like uh, after COVID, um, like what happened to me basically. So basically I'm like doing a lot of project like based on physical installations such as you saw it, um, like Sonic Playground, the Welcome Chorus. And many things have been canceled or kind of postponed because uh, it's kind of avoiding like sort of infection. And then, but same time, like I have a, a lot of nice opportunity about like how to connecting people through the, like, you know, through the audio and especially using sort of like a website and then kind of feeling people to connect it. So one project is called Sound of the Earth Pata, Pata Chan, Pata, pandemic chapter. So we did uh, like this project for Dallas Museum of Art. So idea for this project is uh, basically like this black ball is based um, like position as kind of earth. And you are basically like, uh, or like disconnected during the quarantine time. But people actually submit their own voice or like kind of recording through the like, through the kind of this website. You can actually submit and recording it, and then this website automatically like detecting like location, like kind of making kind of world geographically like right position, basically sound group that we try to make. So like you can record and also at the same time you can like uh, um, like browsing. So like sound is quite like soothing sometimes like uh, their voice or like poem or like sound recording and there's so many different sound is coming out from this project. So as uh, this project is really like a work in progress and it started from zero and now it's around 500 to 600 in here. And it's really nice to hear sound and you're still really connected with this world. So that's like a basically we worked on like uh, um, during COVID period. And then, um, so like this is almost like a end of the, my slide, but uh, something I'm gonna talk um, like this is like really about uh, like you know COVID situation and this kind of pandemic time. It's really like changing like well with communication, but still like sound. It's really really strong element as through communication method, and uh, as a uh, positioning as like a sound designer and sound artist, I feel like uh, importance and sound is quite increasing. Like past couple of months, I feel. So that's probably like end of my presentation. Thank you. So thank you so much, Yuri, for your fantastic talk. Uh, what I'm going to ask all of you to do is that if you have questions, to please use the function on uh, in, in Zoom to raise your hand virtually. And I will try my best to make sure to, to call on people in the order that they actually uh, flag that they have a question. Okay. So would anybody like to start off the question? No? I, I have, um, oh, 
I, I see we have a question. Please, John, uh, John Roach, go on ahead and unmute yourself. Hi there, thank you so much for this great talk. It's, uh, I've been watching your work for a while and it's such a pleasure oh, to hear you talk about it. Um, I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about the project that you were working on, the personal vinyl lathe and, mm. uh, and when yeah. I can get one. <laughs> so that that's kind of became my project as well. So so like maybe like most of like some of you that like doesn't know about another project for vinyl record, you know, like uh, easy record maker. So basically toy version of the record cutting machine. So it's kind of looks like toy, but you can create your own record in handmade. So I collaborated with a Japanese company and uh, created that project and uh, Unfortunately, they don't have any distribution outside of like Japan, but uh, we are working so hard at the moment finding a distributor in the US and the UK, uh, sorry, but Europe, actually, actually Europe and the US at the moment. So it will coming out, but uh, uh, maybe early next year. So anybody else, any other questions? So one of the things that I, I found really fascinating about your presentation, Yuri, is that you, um, your installations and your work oftentimes focus on very uh, kind of um, simple and straightforward interactions, right? And as you said before, your, your intent is to foster communication with a lot of these interactions. Um, mm -hmm. What have, what have your observations been or, or the feedback that you've gotten about the way in which your audience experiences these mm. works? Yeah, I think first of all, like uh, um, my background, like such a dyslexic because highly for me, it's really difficult reading and so on, like understanding difficulty in there. So I intended to design something simple as possible and uh, it universal in the way. And also another thing, um, kind of playful experience is actually like this, basically there's no border in the way anyone can like have like same kind of playful experience. And uh, I'm sort of, I'm not a big fan of the artworks like leading like a bunch of like text and so on to understand the context. And uh, because some people actually think like, yeah, I, I can understand, but some people like, no idea what it's about so that's actually kind of making like a diversion in the way so i purposely try to make everything simple and any like age or like any like gender um or like race like basically there's no border between that because i think that's actually what's happening now in the all over the world actually i feel like most of the cases are kind of purely communication problem and we don't have a kind of common understanding each other. So what I'm gonna to try to do is really like a basis and uh, so something used use as a kind of basic interaction, pray for experienced understanding one concept. So that's basically what I want to do. Is it a, a, a sort of a conscious or intentional maneuver on your point then as an artist to uh, sort of sidestep perhaps issues of politics then and uh, you know, uh, social issues. Uh, for example, I was looking at your website prior to this talk and I noticed mm. there was one work that stood out to me as um, as really different from all the others. It was your, what is it, Acid Brexit? This, yeah. uh, this, this uh, piece of acid music that yeah. was inspired by mm -hmm. Brexit, which was a very intense and very polarizing issue, which, you know, for your particular body of work, really uh, kind of... Uh, uh, it, you know, it, it sort of sidesteps a lot of these kinds mm. of hot button topics. And so for me, it really stood out in your uh, portfolio mm. as mm -hmm. a project. I was like, oh, no, this is actually very, very different. And you even wrote, I believe, in the text, your discomfort at sharing it. So I wonder if you don't mind um, <laughs> speaking a bit about that. Perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's I, I was quite hesitating in the way because somehow I submerged that kind of my kind of subjective opinion as much as possible for like my project actually because i want to be like share like many people as possible kind of common ground <laughs> however um so brexit like i'm based in the uk and uh, like really start to see this 10 years of the corruption of the kind of you know communities destroyed and also like basically kind of uk is committing suicide at the moment and then um, 
I, I love like, this country, but it has got really like uh, something I want to contribute in a way, because I can see like not much like a young generation reacting to what's happening now. And then I just like want to contribute to music as, you know, basically for free. And uh, that time of protest is often happening. So I want to have something driving people to more protest and involving it. And uh, I'm using acid house music, acid techno music, because I do feel like acid house and acid techno music is really kind of protest music from 90s, because I can feel like uh, like early 90s and like later 80s, that time such was there. And the uh, you know, situation is quite similar, like that time, like Theresa May was kind of prime minister and like, extremely like uh, um, conservative government in the kind of destroying many things. Then I feel like uh, acid house was actually like sort of like uh, bashed by like government at like, that time, but still like young people's sort of like protest and a sort of expression uh, in that particular music genre. So I kind of hesitated, but in the end I decided to release that record as kind of free to you know, give into the people as well. But at uh, the same time, I'm trying to not make something so serious anyway for this project and more fun and funny kind of sample of the kind of politician's voice, like almost like, almost like spit image kind of feeling of the like music, but uh, uh, but it does like functioning, like people to using it and uh, for the younger culture to against something. And also like we shouldn't forget what's happened now and we shouldn't really make same mistakes. That's why like, uh, I decided to do that project. Well, thank you for that. I noticed we have a couple of questions here queued up. There's one individual who's been raising their hand and then we have another question through the chat. So we'll pick up those two questions first. Anybody else, if you happen to think of something to ask, please go ahead and uh, raise your hand or share it through the chat. So we have Konstantin Leonenko, if you would like to unmute yourself and ask your question, yes. please. Yes, that's me. Hello, Yuri, thank you for talking. I only managed to join for, for the last bit only. Uh, yeah, no problem. I uh, I still haven't uh, attended the uh, the design museum show, but uh, hopefully, getting there soon. Very curious about that. I just wanted to ask: uh, Is there any specific particular music activity or kind of uh, uh, an instrument or any uh, any sort of uh, yeah practice that uh, that you draw most inspiration from that just kind of gets you into the mm. kind of flow with the band or listening or playing or creating just uh, yeah i think a very general type question yeah absolutely so i think um i used that kind of forced by like my parents learning about how to play piano but i couldn't really manage to learn because uh, i couldn't read any music score and i jumped into the trombone after that and uh, trombone was quite fun because it's a band like you know more collaboration the session then but some point was Quite, for me, it's quite difficult to keep up with the same like uh, speed as like, how people learning for the music. Then I was I kind of discovered basically electronic music like a drum machine or synthesizer. That was a really starting point to me to much more easier to express myself in the music because this, it doesn't need so much like knowledge basically. Like, you know, you don't need it for music like logic. Uh, but just you need to know like how to manipulate like that machines and that was a really quick process to translate. So what's quite um, amazing to discover that kind of way for creating music. Excellent. Thank you Sequencing. for that, Yuri. Uh, nice one. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to move to the question that was shared over in the uh, chat window. And I've seen a couple of different questions roll in after that. We'll try to get to everybody. This is from Ava Watson. Thank you for today's talk. I did the MA course that Yuri's tutors on called Information Experience Design at the RCA. And since 2017, it's been hard in a way to find physical spaces to work within or to get residencies. Could Yuri possibly explain the way in which he started out as an artist designer? Any types of advice for collaboration, early journey in our careers, something along these lines? Mm. I think like a situation like uh, people graduating now, it's quite a similar situation was when I graduated in 2008 as well, because uh, obviously kind of Lehman shock was happened immediately, like my year. So kind of basically I lost so much like a job opportunity at that time. So that's why I had to start in my own studio. 
and uh, it's it's quite bad thing. So now it's quite difficult to traveling because I had so much opportunity that time to any like unpaid project, but still you can visit somewhere to do something. So first my career like after graduation from Royal College uh, of Art is just basically not much income and just one year almost kind of continuously working for like uh, project to project but that's actually quite amazing time and I was quite young as well so I could manage that that time so but uh, same time I think it's really depend on like how you're gonna go, and uh, I'm I'm quite glad I lost all job because I managed to develop my own practice like for the couple of years after. But however, it really depends like how you want to develop your practice. Like for example, some people want to work in the company or like some artists to develop, you know, kind of. In the kind of building up their own kind of career, but some people want immediately starting that. So it's really like a case by case case. That I can't really, um, like, really advise much. But basically, I think same attitude in a way. Like you have to be a bit more like you know, like uh, humble in a way. Like uh, you know, tend to be some people like graduate from master degree like kind of really big pride like i can do things but literally you have to start running again after you graduate so that's kind of attitude is quite important i think wonderful we have a question actually from richard tay uh richard hey uh yuri thank you you um mentioned pentagram in your talk and uh, you are now a partner there i was mostly curious um what new opportunities or possibilities do you see from mm. being a Pentagram partner versus being already in your very successful independent practice? And mm. how has that changed your work or what do you see in the future happening there? Well, I, actually amazing things like um, um, Pentagram is really amazing open and uh, Pentagon doesn't have control for anyone for the details of the work or anything and it's quite generous and uh, amazing and because basically my fishing into came to uh, the Pentagon is really about like came back to Royal College but again like seems like I'm studying again from like uh, amazing partners and uh, almost like in a uh, you know some people like a bit my your kind of classmate and some people like my tutor in a way so it was an incredible opportunity and uh, especially a uh, salary like uh, Daniel Weil, um, he actually mentoring me quite a lot the past couple of years and he just left Pentagram yesterday, like really sad, but uh, I learned from him a lot and that's an amazing honor like uh, to, you know, kind of running under him. So, but at the same time, I think opportunity and basically I'm continuing like same things as I used to do, but uh, I'm, I have more time to think about the kind of sound study as well, because that's fundamental in my interest, like how communication work with sound and also series of work as well, like still like some, you know, we are doing a lot of corporation identity sound as well. That is how we can have better communication through the sound. So it's, I think everything much really nice way, um, you know, my own practice uh, like developed before the Pentagram and the, what Pentagram has as well so it is really great playground in the way thank you fantastic we have another question from the chat window here we have a question from jing jing sun and the question is for commercial projects like z machines the pyramid worlds of uh, world's words light how do you come up with the idea to combine robot with the music any challenges um yeah so first of all like i'm, I'm actually like doing a lot of techy project I'm doing, but I'm really far from techy person. <laughs> so like, I do know like a basis of the kind of programming or uh, basis of the understanding mechanics and stuff, but I'm pretty bad for the you know programming because I'm really bad at mathematics. Anyway, then, um, so reason why that kind of came out idea for like a robot is just like reason, just realizing so specific kind of idea, like we need, we need to use robotic in a way. And uh, of course, if you can imagine, like if you do physical mechanics, that's extremely difficult, I would say, because this world has got gravity 
and also always kind of in the robot and the gear ratio and some damage in the happening. So there's so much unexpected, like, uh, you know, accident happen all the time. So I think challenge in general is really about like stability of the kind of, you know, designing machine and it's, it will keep breaking. And sometimes it's so hard to make an industrial level robot in a, in a short time and a creative like challenge. But uh, I think, um, robot could do like something like a uh, human cannot do like such as like repeating same action many times that's like normally human being cannot do so like we actually can use that kind of like uh, um sort of like ability like a robot to do something else thank you and um just as a note ava i i've saw i've seen that you put in another question what i'm going to do in the interest of trying to get to everybody's questions is go through some of the other ones but if we have time we'll come back to it okay but thank you so much for sharing <laughs> we're going to skip on over though to sheer david and uh, this question is in the chat window uh, this question says, did you find new tools, hobbies, or new interests during uh, this time in the pandemic? Um, not really, no. I think um, I just realized because uh, now I'm pretty much full-time in the market, in the house, and I work from home, basically, because I cannot physically commuting to like office at the moment. I used to commuting every morning and coming back and come spending like three hours for commuting. But now I have got kind of after work or before work on the weekend, I have got my own time to do something and really related to what I work normally anyway, because there's not much like border between what do as work or like what I prefer. But I, I was kind of passionate to create things like a, a lot of acid house music, like, uh, you know, while like, I was working, like, I, I wish I have a chunk of time to finishing it. Then since like lockdown happened, like after like uh, six o'clock, basically after work, I don't have much things to do. So I've started making like uh, quite a lot of acid house music. So I almost make around 70 or 80 acid house music now. And I'm looking for a music label to releasing it. So that's probably the new hobby or something. <laughs> Wonderful. We have another question in the chat window. This is from Dag. Uh, Dag asks, hi, Yuri. Thanks for this great talk. I was wondering what your take on the relationship between sound and space is. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's, I, I believe like space means more of the architecture and acoustic relation, I guess. But uh, um, yeah, it's different to have to think about constellation always like a, like because I do a lot of music composition for the work and again in the pentagram at the moment. But we really considering actually composition itself and the sound aesthetic is nothing about sound design. Like we have to consider about what kind of like a device playback sound and so what kind of environment playback like sound as well. So we strongly considering about um, acoustic like these days. And many companies like struggle at the moment to put in conference system at the moment because um, they're not very really used to it, you know, put in conference system, like even Pentagram as well. And now like we are issue of the kind of sound echoing all the time, like some noise coming from outside. So we have to redesign everything. So I'm like start like doing a lot of kind of, you know, like acoustic kind of engineering part project as well, because I never learned before, but we had to research quite a lot, what's efficient way to making avoid like echo or like kind of bad acoustics. So I think, again, like this is one of the like considerations so many people realizing during COVID or pandemic time, how important were acoustic of the house or work environment. Wonderful, thank you. and. Uh... Jia Bao, I see you've turned on your video. Would you like to ask your question uh, live or would you prefer me to read it from the chat screen? Yeah, uh, so um, I'll just ask the live. Um, thanks for sharing your work, Yuri. Um, so yeah, as you like first started your studio, uh, how, how did you get commissions, projects? Uh, how, how did you become independent? And over the 10 years, how it changes and scales? Um, mm. as a, uh, yeah. I think, again, like, um, like once I say, like, as I, when 2008, I graduated from college, um, lawyer college, but that was really worst time in a financial time, you know, basically like a Lehman shock was happened, credit crunch. So kind of like a first two years, basically no money or like stability or anything, but at the same time, that time, you know, 
like <laughs> I basically pay quite cheap rent and I don't need so much for like, you know, money in a way so I can do whatever I want. So like first two years, really investment for me, whatever I'm going to take, any opportunity I took as well, like even unpaid or anything. So, but I'm more excited about to increase my own like kind of works, you know, put in a portfolio and put in, can show in the public and sharing idea. So that's like a driving. And I never really thought about the kind of making my own studio neither. Because the reason why I had to make it because of like a, I I got an amazing project uh, with kind of big musician, and they, to able to this like we had to make a company like as was really you know for the tax reason or like many administration reason impossible to take us myself, so uh, like that's why I made a studio and they kind of start hiring people and then then like became like more studio format as well, um and also like you know kind of the content of the job as well because I used to do more of a hundred percent art design project but it became more like in a client asking me to do something after that. So everything came quite naturally. I was quite lucky in the way like I'm not intently like grabbing something or anything. Just naturally everything happened. And then then like you know I've got a phone call from a kind of basic pentagram to do like we became partner at some point. I just really surprised because I I thought like this is really five things to me but they thought about the potential to me. So I think everything really, I would say like quite lucky and thank you to everyone as well. But I think one thing is quite important thing is really about, you know, kind of human relation in the way that like if you have a respectable person, you really have to respect and uh, being humble. <laughs> and that's, I feel like uh, only things otherwise. I think, you know, all about you know, like, you know friendship or relationship, like making, you know, things happen, I think. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Okay, so let's see, we're almost out of time. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, we have that last question from Ava that we'll just use to finish up with. Um, this question is, what part of the creative journey do you enjoy the most? Yeah, um... I think like, my, my most enjoyable time is uh, first I got a brief from client or like some brief came in and fast like one hour it's like a, probably the best time like in, in terms of the installation because uh, I'm doing like real we call larger installation these days some you know installation taking two years or three years to realizing that but the uh, idea actually literally came in like fast one hour for like yeah it's can be a super nice project to do it that's probably the most exciting time and after that we have to have kind of all that kind of insurance and also production <laughs> and that became wow okay this is more like logistic work after that but uh, I, I do enjoy joining that process but probably most exciting time is you came up idea and put in like a notebook that's probably the best time i think fantastic we are just uh out of time here but there are a few things that i need to be able to do before we go ahead and um and wrap up number one what i would like to do is go ahead and plug um here. Go ahead and plug the future cloud salon events. And as we're wrapping up here, the things that I'd like to do is thank the organizing team of cloud salon. We have Richard Tay, Xing Ching, Sven Travis, graphic design by Richard Tay, program coordinator, Sam Morrison, and support for our, from the program, both BFADT and MFADT. This is uh, program directors, John Sharp and Melanie Crean. At the very last thing that I, I think that we would uh, love to be able to do is have everybody go ahead and unmute. This is a suggestion from Shing. I thought it was fantastic. I am going to go ahead and load up um, Sounds of the Earth <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. If we all take ourselves off of mute, I'm actually going to go ahead and call these uh, pods. And uh, if we all unmute ourselves, I'm going to go ahead and record something. <laughs> Do we need a countdown? One, two, three. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.
Thank you. Yes, Have a nice safe. weekend. Stay safe. Stay safe. <laughs> Massive party tonight on D12. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, thank you much so much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs>